Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Email me for pricing. My email is tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a watch built in the mid-2000s with an extraordinary combination of enameling and miniature painting. This is the Roger Dubuis Much More Africa enamel dial. Uh, the timepiece is ideal for folks who have a sentimental attachment to Africa, either by visitation or by birth, as well as fans of the band Toto. Now that we're past that, let's talk about the dimensions of this substantial rose gold much more. The watch measures 34.5 millimeters from 9 to 3, not including the crown, from Lug to lug, it is a broad 58.3 millimeters, but in terms of thickness, it's only 10.2 millimeters thick. It has a 25 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Throwing the watch on the wrist, you could see the much more is much larger than I would typically wear. It gives you much more watch, and it lives up to its billing. You could see that the watch is exceptionally thin, so it will slide underneath the cuff, but on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist, there's just too much lug overlap. I think you need a wrist of at least 17 centimeters circumference conference to wear this well. The strap is a Roger Dubuis factory piece. You can see it's calfskin on the bottom, brand new on the top, medium to small rectangular scale alligator leather, a cut we don't often see. It is semi-gloss black with a sheer cut side, a monotone stitch, and a matching rose gold Roger Dubuis pin buckle that includes both satination and polish for a handsome and subtle contrast. And that could be said of the case as well, which features vertical satination all the way around. You can see even the lug profiles are vertically satinated. The screws fixing the strap, as well as the lug hoods and the bezel, are all of high polish. And I'll remove my fingerprints so you can more easily see the detail here. The watch is in very good shape. Dubuis did things the right way. You could see that the strap is held on using screws and bars rather than spring bars. This means it's much less likely to separate by accident. Additional security when wearing this large, heavy, and expensive watch. Roger Dubuis branded crown. It's an RD. That's what you're actually looking right here. Uh, we have a lovely cambered sapphire that perfectly matches the curvature of the bezel. And it's not easy to make a sapphire irregularly shaped and cambered like this. Round is easy. These shapes, especially when arced end to end, are challenging. And yet the watch was still rated at 30 meters water resistant. That might seem standard for the dress watch class, and it is, but it's not easy to do with this kind of construction. Even less straightforward is the matter of a curved dial. Enameling a curved dial is a supreme challenge, which is why it's hardly ever done. And Dubuis actually filed for a patent in 2003 for their method of enameling a curved dial. I estimate that this watch, because of the use of the uh, caliber RD57 and the enamel dial. I believe this watch would have been made between 2004 and 2007, just to give you a time period. Uh, the later ones from 2007 onward, 2006, 2007 onward, featured the RD in-house movements. I actually like the Longines base more. Taking a look at the dial, you can see that the first thing you'll note is that the edges actually wrap down and around. In order to get the enamel to adhere, a steel plate was polished fine, and then the enamel was applied over multiple layers and fired multiple times at up to 800 degrees centigrade. Now, what really sets this apart isn't that it's enamel. A glass-based vitreous paint to create a white or black enamel dial can be done at a relatively low level and uh, excessively priced, as we've seen with the Seiko Presage collection. That's not great enamel, but it gets you on board if you just want a simple monotone enamel dial. Things become much more difficult when you add multiple colors, and they become exponentially more difficult when you start adding miniature painting, which truthfully is a separate skill and trade than enameling. Very rare is the artisan who is capable of both 
enameling and miniature painting at the same time. And that's exactly what we have right here to create the image of the continent, the ship, the ocean, the flora and fauna, the clouds above, the compass rows, and the Roman numerals at the quarters. All of this would have taken an excruciating amount of time. And it's not simply a matter of painting shapes and changing colors. You could see that there are some transitions of color here, especially around the border of the continent, where mixing the colors and the thick of the colors applied actually creates these shades. We have fired hands at center in blued steel. It is a very impressive statement of capability that Dubuis did all of this and that they did it on their own proprietary curved dial design. Now, when you flip it over, you realize this is a limited edition. Only 28 were made like this, and the entire watch is actually curved and cambered to better match the shape of the wrist. On the reverse side, I mentioned that this is a Longines base. It goes by a couple of different names. I just I generally call this the Longines L990, though later on it would become the Breguet 8810 and 8815. It has been upgraded substantially, as you can see. Everything has been raised to the level of the Poisson de Genève. This is a Geneva hallmark movement. It is adjusted in five positions, which is the high horology and chronometer standard of adjustment. You can see it's been upgraded with different elements applied manually and artisanally, including mirrored anglage, linear abrasive wheel Côte de Genève, engine turning on the base plate. All screw heads are black polished with chamfered slots and chamfered circumference. You can see both the stud holder and the swan's neck are black polished here. And all the wheels are satinated. We actually have twin mainspring barrels, automatic winding with unidirectional action, a 44-hour power reserve. All this pivots on 25 joules. So while it began life as a Longines, that Longines movement was highly regarded to begin with. It has been elevated to the state of the art, and I do mean art as the Roger Dubuis RD57. And all of this is water resistant down to 30 meters. Reach out to Team Osso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.